Kiwi. 102.2 Auckland. The Radio Whammo Breakfast. Talking politics with Phil Goff. Leader of the Labour Party, Phil Goff is with us this morning. Good morning to you, Phil. G'day, Whammo. And fresh from the big Labour Party gig on the weekend, uh, where it would appear that um, you were like a rock star, apparently, at the end. <laughs> I, I heard from some people who went, and uh, and they said you were the Tony Robbins of the of the event. Is that right? Well, it, probably because I didn't sing, mate. If I had, it might have turned out differently. Uh, no, look, it was, uh, it was a really enthusiastic uh, conference, uh, I, I think that uh, the delegates were, you know, revved up. They were ready to go. They were wanting to go out there and win. They saw things that were happening in New Zealand that they thought were grossly unfair. Uh, they want to go out and make a difference. They want to go out and really help New Zealanders achieve the Kiwi dream. And that was what the theme of the conference was about. It was about having a government that looked after all New Zealanders and not just the privileged few. OK, well, one of the uh, main uh, main policy shifts to come out of the conference was <coughs> this thing about foreign ownership. Um, you were saying that you'll turn down big land sales to overseas buyers except in exceptional circumstances. What kind of exceptional circumstances? Well, turn down practically all land sales, actually, any, any land over the size of five hectares. The only way that you'd be able to buy up New Zealand land uh, is if you were able to demonstrate very clearly that uh, what you were doing was going to bring a, a big increase in jobs, a shift in technology, uh, something that would be of major benefit to New Zealand, and that would largely be uh, if you were going to add value to your product here. For example, let me give you an example. If you wanted to uh, buy some land to plant uh, trees and that you were committed to building a pulp and paper mill that would uh, uh, create you know, 500 uh, jobs in New Zealand, um, yeah, of course we'd say yes. But if you wanted to buy the land to plant the trees just to keep exporting unprocessed logs, we'd say no. Mm. Well, there's no real value to that uh, for New Zealand. Yeah. You know, you, you could, you can, if you want to sell an asset in New Zealand, you've got to say, what good will it do to New Zealand? Right now, our farmers are the most efficient in the world. What will a Hong Kong company do to improve our productivity, our technology, our skills in farming? Absolutely mm. zero. What they will do, Wamo, is they'll push the price of the land up. And, and, and they can do that because they can outbid any New Zealander. They've got access to huge surpluses of money uh, and they've got access to cheap money. So that effectively means for the young uh, Kiwi farmer, uh, he or she would be priced off the market uh, because they'd never be able to bid against uh, natural dairy, for example, to buy, buy one of the Crafer farms. And we don't think that's good for New Zealand uh, and, and we're going to put a stop to that. So is this an acknowledgement that the free market simply just doesn't work? Well, it, it doesn't work in every area, and there are areas where you simply say you've got to put New Zealand's interests first. That's the obligation uh, of a New Zealand government. You see, John Key comes out and says we don't want to be tenants in our own land. I agree with that absolutely. But then we asked Morris Williamson in Parliament uh, last week, uh, how, many so how many farm sale applications have you declined? Do you know the answer? No. Zero. Mm. <laughs> absolutely zero. Then mm. we asked him, will these new rules make a difference? And he equivocated. You know, that, that's smoke and mirrors. We're saying, look, you know, ask me what, what I, I, I think the real threat is. The real threat is that a number of countries around the world uh, are building up big assets, uh, big surpluses. Mm. They want to invest. Uh, mm. Interest rates are low at the moment. What's the sensible area to invest in? Buy land where you're producing food. Control the whole supply chain from the farm gate uh, through to the market. But what's the benefit to New Zealand? Well, no benefit. What's the threat to New Zealand? If they buy the whole of the supply chain from the farming through to the marketing, they might decide, well, you know, instead of processing this, uh, this milk powder into further value-added pro mm. products in New Zealand, we can do that cheaply in our own country, so we'll just ship off the bulk product, uh, the commodity, and we won't add value. And that then hurts New Zealand. OK, well then, how does all this affect our free trade agreements? I mean, isn't it time to perhaps put, put the brakes on free trade agreements and really analyse really what's going on here? No, uh, I negotiated the free trade agreement with China. There is nothing in that agreement that would prevent us doing what I'm proposing. In fact, you know, look at it from a, um, you know, equal both ways uh, perspective. China won't let you buy land in China, uh, so they would hardly protest that they couldn't buy uh, land in New Zealand. It just simply says that we're applying the same rules uh, to overseas uh, uh, purchases of farms as well, they are. How do these big Fonterra farms in China work then? Uh, they lease. Uh, they've got short-term leases. So, so uh, 
And, and where do the profits from those farms go? Do they go back to China or do they go back to New Zealand? Oh, the farms, are the, 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 the Fonterra farms, they, yeah. go, to, they, they go to uh, Fonterra, so back to New Zealand. Okay, well, so, uh, but so they, do, what, they do help China. But, but that's because of a totally different thing. But, but, with, but with, what, what, what's stopping a, China, a Chinese firm doing the same kind of leasing arrangement here in New Zealand? Well, no, we could say we, we, we would allow a lease, but you'd have to say that uh, that would be on the basis of, again, a benefit to New Zealand. And, you know, does China benefit from Fonterra's investment? Of course, because we bring the most advanced technology, the best animal husbandry, the best pasture management, all of those things that would make China more productive. But what does China offer back in purchase of land in New Zealand? Well, they don't have those things. That's where our schools lie. That's, that's our strength. They can't bring, or anybody else in the world can't bring those sort of things to New Zealand. We have them already. So we don't get a benefit, uh, but we do suffer the mm. losses because land prices will go up, uh, dividends will be repatriated without any particular benefit of adding jobs and adding value to okay, New Zealand. And, and you've given, given that example of also uh, of, of the you know, uh, planting trees, but w w w where are the specifics in this? I mean, how, how can it be measured the benefit to New Zealand? How is, yeah, where's the devil in the detail here? Oh, because they would have to make the firm commitments. It would probably be uh, equivalent to contractual commitments that if they were able to purchase this land, this is their intention, this is what they would do. Can you measure it in dollar terms, though? I mean, again... Oh, no, but, but you do know, um, if you use the example that I gave to you, you do know if somebody says, well, we're going to plant out uh, 5,000 hectares of this land uh, uh, in trees, we're going to build a pulp and paper plant, or a, uh, a, a fibreboard plant here, and this will create approximately three or four hundred or five hundred jobs. Uh, it's 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 not easy to see. It's not easy to to uh, uh, you know differentiate what would benefit from New Zealand as against somebody just buying here uh, to sit on the land, make a capital gain, uh, push up the price of land, but not add much in terms of value. Who's going to make the decisions in this? Oh, look, uh, in the same way that uh, we've, we've always made those decisions, you, 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 you do it through uh, a government agency is uh, required to do that, um, but that's, that's not difficult either. Well, the uh, you've, over, got, you've got the Overseas Investment, investment uh, Office at the right. moment, Wemo, uh, and that could, that, that, its role could be amended to, uh, to take over that. Well, can a minister not be in charge of this at all? Oh, there'd be ministerial responsibility, absolutely. Um, uh, but, but the work, the hard work, if that's what you're asking, you know uh, would be done in an office. Tell me if I'm, if I'm completely wrong here, but uh, I'm, I'm sure you know, New Zealand is concerned about the economic benefits. We want to make sure that the economic benefits of uh, New Zealand land stays here in New Zealand. But also, you know, do you, I also at the same time think, well, we don't really care who owns the land, just as long as they look after it, just as long as they make sure the land is there for future generations in New Zealand as well, and that, that the land isn't ruined, that it's, you know, that it's not, uh, that the environment isn't degraded, all that kind of thing. Well, you have to have those controls over whoever owns the land, including New Zealanders. Uh, Crafer wasn't a great example of looking after the exactly. land. They, they, they kept having to prosecute him under the Resource Management Act. I mean, what, 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 if, what if an overseas buyer came in and said, look, some of these economic benefits are going to go overseas, but I tell you what, I'm going to make sure that, that this land is looked after better than any New Zealander can. Well, that, that should be the requirement on all New Zealand farmers, and that's why you probably need to put a bit more teeth into the, uh, the, the legislation, because Crafer managed to get away time and again with despoiling the land, with, uh, with polluting the rivers, uh, and sure he got the fines, and in the end they did catch up with him, but uh, it was rather a long process. But what I'm saying, I'm not saying we want to keep the sort of Crafer management, I'm saying give young New Zealanders the chance under the same rules that should apply to everybody about looking after the quality of the land and the environment, but give a young Kiwi the chance to get on the land rather than lock that person out because an overseas bidder will outbid a Kiwi bidder every time. Bill Goff, thanks very much for your time this morning. Thanks, Wemo. Cheers. Catch you later, mate. Leader, of the, see, leader of the Labour Party, uh, Phil Goff.